Well, we're here in Madison, Ohio, um, with uh, the co-founder of Premier Bee Products, Jeff Johnson. Jeff, thanks for taking time out today to have a conversation, and thanks for uh, taking a whole week with us here in Ohio, having fun. I've really had a good time in Ohio. I've never really been out to this part of the country before, so uh, seeing everything, it's a whole lot different than South Dakota. <laughs> it's a little bit different than South Dakota, isn't yep. it? Lots of trees and lots of hills, which we don't have either in South Dakota. We've had a lot of fun here. We're uh, up here in Madison, Ohio, uh, at, at the Phillips uh, uh, family homestead here. Uh, right now, Damon's smoking some brisket and ribs and making a heck of a feast for us all, and we're looking forward to that. Um, we've had a great time all week. Well, we spent yesterday up on Lake Erie yep. fishing. Caught a bunch of walleye. Good. Yeah. Nope. I'm not too proud to admit I actually got a blister. We were reeling so many fish, and I, I got a blister on my finger for that. But that's because you always caught the biggest one. Well... Got to thank uh, Ed Friel and family for yeah. uh, for getting that scheduled for us. Um, it, it's always great. One of the best things I think about beekeeping is the bees are great, but I always enjoy the people, the people aspect, uh, meeting new people, making new friends, building community. Um, I think is a is an important component of not only living a quality life but building a business. Mm -hmm. Be uh, the beekeepers are just tremendous people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Phillips family and Friel uh, both have opened up their 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 homes and their families to us and have been. Uh, very gracious. So uh, a big thank you to them um, for having us all here. Um, it's a great opportunity, Jeff, uh, on the, the the presentation that you gave earlier this week. We got to dig in a little bit and learn a little bit more on who Jeff Johnson is and how he kind of got us started. And I don't know that most folks know uh, how you actually got your start in business. Well, it's, you know, I don't think it's anything special, but when I kind of look back at it, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting story, I think. I mean, I started out as a critical care registered nurse, and from that, I went into the pharmaceutical industry. And while I was in the pharmaceutical industry, I started a string of car washes on the side. And then I got tired of traveling all the time when I was in the pharmaceutical industry. So me and... Uh, one of my friends bought a power sports dealership and started running a large power sports dealership in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And that went along really good for many years. And then a group of guys wanted to buy our power sports dealership from us. And we were kind of at a point where, well, you know what, if they want it bad enough, we'll sell it. So we sold it. But then I realized I was too young to be retired. I had to have something to do. It was driving me nuts. And, and so my business partner, in the power sports dealership was my chief financial officer. His name's Brad. So we uh, had another really good friend um, named Mark, who's kind of a plastics expert. And Mark said, you know, you guys got to find something to do. You're going nuts. You don't have anything to do. You're driving your wife's nuts. Um, you need to come up with something to make out of plastic. And, you know, that's kind of, there's a lot of plastic out there and we, we didn't have any idea what to do. And, uh, came across a, a uh, small beekeeper that we knew. And he said, you know, you should make foundation. And that's how the whole thing started is wow. Brad and I had to have something to do. Um, and we stumbled across foundation. And from years ago, I was also a biology major in college. And I thought, you know, the, the science behind bees is still very, very interesting to me. I really like it. Um, and we ended up developing Premier Foundation from that. So from car wash to Premier B Foundation. Exactly. The burning question is, how many quarters fit in a five-gallon bucket? $5,000. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, and you can't lift you it. You can't lift that. You cannot lift it. So you've had quite a few different experiences building uh, several different businesses. Yep. Um, for a lot of folks that are going to be listening to this, they're also trying to grow uh, a B business, a B retail business, or their uh, maybe dreaming and scheming of doing something like that someday in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, uh, and not to put you on the spot, but to also put you on the spot, looking back after all these years, what words of wisdom would you have for folks? What pitfalls do you think um, are, are common as folks try to build and scale that maybe um, you've learned the hard way that you could pass on uh, some words of wisdom there? You know, I really think regard if you're wanting to start out a small retail bee store, you're wanting to become a large commercial beekeeper, whatever your dream is, you have to have a dream first, you have to have a passion for it. But then you also have to have a really good plan. Um, plan your work, work your plan. 
And don't give up on your dream just because you hit a bump in the road or you stub your toe. Just use that as an opportunity. Think, okay, gee, I'm not going to do that again. And use it to be uh, something that you learn from, not something that takes you out of the game. Um, it doesn't really matter what your dream is, um, but you got to have a dream and go for it. You have to play well with others, it seems like, too. Yep. You know, but that's not that that's not that difficult. If, if you have um, a core set of values, like the, the values that that we had in our power sports dealership, the values, the corporate values that we've got for um, uh, Premier B, um, the number one value that we have is integrity. You know what? You always tell the truth. And when you mess up, you fess up. Um, that's a that's a value that I think is above and anything else is integrity. And then we have teamwork is another value. And then a third value that we've got that we've had in all our businesses, excellence. You have to be the best you possibly can be. And if you think you're as good as you're going to be, you can get better. And you just have to keep pushing yourself to get better. And that's a better product. It's a better taking care of your customers. It's better in your personal life. It's better with your kids. It's always trying to be the best you can be. Well. Wow. I think um, that's an important thing about uh, there's for folks listening, if they're not familiar um, with the different foundations, there's lots of different foundations out there. Yep, there are everything from uh, small cell to large cell, wired, wax, uh, different varieties of plastic, different colors. The list goes on and on and on and on. But I, when we were first looking uh, to uh, when we were entertaining the idea of going to plastic, we had we had you couldn't convince me years ago to, to even switch to plastic. We were uh, primarily sold on wax only, and, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And until so I heard about this product that uh, sort of resembled um, some of the, the, the merits and ideas behind small cell beekeeping um, without necessarily having a specifically small cell, but a foundation that could have more bees per foundation um, than some of the other products, which led, led to the idea of where we could take the same piece, the same uh, square inch, the same surface area of foundation and have a higher yield off the same input, that that was kind of huge. Uh, when you mentioned that Premier is kind of based on foundationally better beekeeping, right. like that's huge. You really set after to build a better mousetrap. And really what we did, Greg, is, and it it's not me, it's um, one of the other co-founders, Mark, the guy that's the plastics expert. Um, when we were looking at, at getting into foundation, we had all the other found plastic foundations that are made out there in the United States. We, we had cases and cases of all of them, and we took them into the labs and started measuring them underneath neath high resolution microscopes. Because when they say that they're 5.2 millimeters or 5.3 or 5.4, whatever they say, it's, my mind was like, well, how are they measuring that? And we didn't know. And, and when I got a hold of the different manufacturers to ask them how they measured it, they measure a string of 10 and divide it by 10. And that's the size of their cell. But, you know, I came from the outside of the industry. So from the outside looking in, my mind went to, well, of course not. That's not the size of a cell. That's the size of 10 cells and 11 cell walls. And that's not the space straight in one individual cell that the bee lives in. I wanted to know. What was the dimension of the individual cell that the bee lived in? Right. And so I figured, you know, if, if we could see what that, figure out what that was and then compare that to the existing foundations and see if they matched up with that or not, that would probably be some really good information to know to see if we were going to continue to try to um, come out with a new foundation. And, and what we found was pretty interesting. None of the existing foundations were the size of an individual cell that they said they were. And so we knew that. And we also knew because of um, Mark, the plastics expert in my group, my friend, um, golf partner, fishing buddy. <laughs> um, he knew that many, many aspects of the existing foundations that were out there were determined by their manufacturing process, not by what the bees wanted, but, but it was by what the plastic mold could make. And so we thought, well, okay, we know that about the existing ones, but what size 
does a bee really want? What's mother nature telling the bees to do? And so what we did was we got a bunch of natural comb out of top bar hives from all over the United States. And we took that into the, the labs and measured that underneath high resolution microscopes. And when we found um, what those dimensions were, then we had to come up with a way to manufacture it because we wanted to manufacture what the bees wanted. We did not want to try to make the bees like what we knew we could make. Right. Um, and you mentioned earlier a little bit about um, there's more cells on our sheet. And the reason there's more cells isn't because the cell is smaller. It's because the cell wall is 36% thinner because in natural honeycomb, the cell walls are very thin. They're not real thick like they are on what were the existing foundations at that time. So that's kind of where Premier uh, Foundation came from. You know, starting all the way back at the foundation, I know it's probably cliche to say, but it, it's uh, often overlooked. Uh, when you get into beekeeping, there are so many different methods and possibilities and variables and on and on and on and on and on. You know, most folks um, who are getting started or even building a bee yard or business there's so many other details uh, to kind of focus and worry about um, that these, this information is not something that you really uh, take a real close look at. Now, folks, um, like, like we, when we were at, started, we were using starter strips and, and naturally drawn foundation, and we weren't necessarily digging in deep to measuring all that uh, to get uh, to, to, to um, qualify or quantify what we were seeing. We just knew that when we put a piece of wax on there, the bees draw it out and that's what they you know choose to do well i think what's interesting is this year um we were on the fence and uh i, I just i called the number on premier's website mm -hmm. and this guy calls and he's extremely passionate and full of information and made me feel very comfortable and he wasn't pushy about the, the product at all and he said well just let the bees choose let's see, see what the bees do and so of course that was you um, on the phone, I think we probably spent an hour on the phone, um, you know, talking about all that. Order some foundation, put it into the hives, and I will admit, was still even skeptical um, when we put it in. You know, you, when it's it's easy to revert back to what you're comfortable with, yep. uh, and it's easy to revert back to what you think you think is working. Um, but uh, the saying that you don't know what you don't know until you know that you don't know it. Um, we tried it out and, and we put uh, premier foundation in a, in several different configurations. We put it next to many other manufacturers plastic. Um, but I think what's also interesting is we put that right next to the same wax that we've been using for all these years. Now I got to interrupt you here because I remember the phone call when you called me back and you were like, Jeff, I just got to tell you that, you know, I, I looked in some of the hives today and you're telling me this and I still didn't know what you're going to say. It. And I'm, I'm sitting in my office on the phone and I'm going, oh no, my heart just sank. <laughs> and you go, because we compared this, we put it right next to real wax foundation and I'm going, oh no, this is just going to be terrible. Because you think that shoe would be the, the gold standard. Exactly. Because I was thinking, you know, you always compare it to another plastic foundation that's got some wax coating on it. And you went right to the gold standard. And I didn't know anybody that ever done that before. And so when you're telling me this, I'm going, oh, no. But now then tell them what you told me. This episode is brought to you by Nature's Image Farm. If you're interested in nukes, packages, queens, or supplies, visit us on the web at naturesimagefarm.com. Now, then tell them what you told me. So we, we, we ran it. Uh, 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 context is key. We, we sell makeup nukes and queens. Um, and we do run a lot of 10 framers that are on four-way pallets and such now. Um, but the configurations that we were interested in primarily in testing this in uh, was nukes and also our, our queen mating boxes. Um, and so we've got lots of different um, manufacturers of plastic, but also the wax that we were very, very comfortable with that uh, year after year has shown us the results that we were happy with. There were some things about uh, deep wax that we didn't like. You know, sometimes it gets hot and it bows out and it kind of gets funky. And you know, when you're selling nukes and you want to sell folks beautiful sheets of foundation that are straight and beautiful, gorgeous brood patterns and honey frames, 
you know, sometimes you're digging through and pulling out these ones that don't look so good. And those are going into your, you know, your stock and you're recycling kind of those through to give folks the best. It got to be a little bit laborious. And so we thought, well, here's where this is going to make a difference. So if we put premier plastic in and we compare it with everybody else, okay, is it going to perform at least as good? Okay. If it does, well, what's the price point? Does it make any kind of sense to move forward? But we thought, well, let's just cut right through it. Let's see if how this actually does with wax, because we've had experience comparing the others with wax. Um, and we were still leaning towards wax because wax seemed to do better than some of the other manufactured plastic. So in my mind, I thought, well, if I'm going to switch and if it's just another you know, manufacturer of plastic, let's see how it does against wax. So we would literally put these we uh, on. Uh, we, we put fresh premier foundation in boxes, deeps five frame deep boxes, uh, five frame medium boxes, three frame boxes of both configurations, 10 frame boxes of both configurations. And we use it when we made splits and we also use it when we installed some packages. So we're talking about a pretty wide selection of uh, different stages that the bees are in and what they kind of want to plan to do and things like that. And to give it a fair shake, when we installed the Premier Foundation in these boxes, we didn't just put one box all Premier and then another hive that was uh, a different plastic manufacturer, because as you know, every hive is its own little um, super organism um, that behaves differently. Um, and so how fast they draw, the overall health, the dynamic, the vibe is all different. So we thought, well, let's do this. Let's install this premier foundation right next to some of these other manufacturers, right next to wax and on and on and on. But we didn't just stop there. Because we, if we wanted to maybe skew it, you would think, well, let's say we're going to install a package and we're going to have feed on top. Typically, whatever frame you put directly in the middle underneath the feed is probably going to be the one they're going to draw out first. So we switched it up. We put Premier right in the center. We put Wax right in the center. We put other manufacturers right in the center. And then we would kind of checkerboard those in. And so we're going through the first box and uh, the, the, the packages were the very first ones that we, we were, I was like, what am I seeing here? You know, because on a package, especially in, in this current context, these were all fresh sheets. Okay, so there was no drawn comb. So I wanted to see exactly what the bees were going to do. We put uh, uh, some pro suite feed on top and we checkerboarded all these varieties of, of uh, foundations. We go through it probably... Uh, the first time was four days later to release the queen, make sure she's out. And I'm seeing there. Oh, that's interesting. At that time, we were using the, the, the yellow premier sheets. Well, that's interesting. It looks like they're drawing out the premier before they're pulling anything else. Okay, well, that, was that one in the middle? No, that actually, the premier was not in the middle. It was over one or two. Okay, well, maybe that's a fluke. Who knows what? Go to the next box. Start to see the same thing. Go to the next box. Go to the next box. After 15 or 20 boxes, what I kept seeing is the bees are actually hopping over wax, straight wax sheets, and they're moving past other manufacturers' plastic to go right to the Premier Foundation almost every single time. I'm thinking, what in the world's going on here? Bees, I think a lot of times they do want to take the path of least resistance. So at least in my mind, if we put a frame directly under feed, when we install a package, whatever's underneath, that's going to be their fastest avenue to start drawing things out. Yep. And they were moving beyond those, going over frames over, frames over, frames over, and drawing out the, the premiere. I thought, okay, well, who knows? Maybe it's just a, a weird fluke thing. I had no idea. I called you and said, you're not going to believe this. So we gave it a little bit more time. Once the queen started laying and they started drawing things out, where we really noticed a difference is when they really started bringing in pollen and nectar they would have beautiful, fully drawn premier sheets before anything else was even touched. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, every single box eventually yep. drew every single frame out. But that's why you have to, if you're gonna do a test, that's why you have to go back and watch what's going on in there because it's they're gonna tell you what they like best by what they go to first. Right. But they still have to have the room, so they'll end up drawing it all out over time but what they draw out first is what they like best. Exactly. Yep. If, if you give them the opportunity and they have no room, they will draw the foundation out on the lid, on the side, anywhere they possibly can. Yep. I was interested in 
what did the bees have to say about this foundation? Right. And when they chose to draw out the premiere first, a light bulb went off and I said, oh, we might have something here. You know, we, we run a very small outfit. We have a, a small family apiary and farm that we're trying to grow um, to, to pass down to the kids. Um, and like most folks, we have limitations and they're usually like everybody else are based on money and time. Yep. So if we were going to invest money into a product, it had to do something. And if it can find a way to save a little bit of time um, or there was a little bit uh, higher return on that investment, well, that's something that we need to put more focus on to. This Premier Foundation has been what I call a force multiplier around the farm. It's, it's, a, it's a component that has more than just one yield and in and of itself is a, is a one on one equals three. And that's what this foundation has been. It's, it's been so incredibly easy to install. The bees are choosing it. Um, and these sheets of brood that are coming off this frame when selling nukes, folks are going, ooh, you pull it out, it's gorgeous. We have, we have some of these, these sheets here. Um, and one of the first things that I noticed is opening out of the box, how, how it smells. Mm -hmm. I mean, it absolutely smells amazing. Well, I, I can talk a little bit about the smell, Greg. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate. I live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And when I started going down this road, um, I realized from using Google that the world's largest beekeeper, the 80 family, live about 35 miles from me. And I also realized that North America's largest and oldest beeswax rendering company is also about 40 minutes from me. Um, a. H. Meyer and Sons mm. out in Winford, South Dakota. And so, you know, I, I don't know if this is a shout out or what, but the 80 family helped me out immensely because I just drove up there and Brett and Kelvin start talking to me and I talking with Richard while we're walking down Main Street in Bruce, South Dakota. They welcomed me back every time I had questions about any of this. They would kind of be a devil's advocate and tell me what their experience or what they thought. Um the same thing happened with the 80 family and the wax because I didn't know anything about wax, but I knew that if I had a, could make a plastic foundation, I had to come up with a wax to coat it with. And um, uh, BJ and Ken and Melissa up at A.H. Meyer, they did everything that I, anytime I went up there, they took time out of their day and helped me. And just so everybody knows, 100% of the wax that we use is fully rendered capping wax that the Myers save me and sell to me. That's a huge and, difference. And it, it's all U.S. Um, capping wax. And um, I've never had a drop of anybody else's wax in any facility of mine anywhere. And the quality of the wax is huge. And I, I know nobody else can, can offer that quality of wax. That's where that smell comes from. So the sheets are made, the plastic itself, these, these sheets are, are made in the U.S. Yeah, and right the wax suit. itself yeah. uh, is from the same. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of rare. Right. I make, we make the sheets, the plastic sheets we make in Sioux Falls. And I work the line, you know, if the guy that's supposed to work overnight calls in sick or doesn't show up, I'm the guy that gets to go out and work from 11 at night till 6 in the morning. Um, but we make the plastic right there. We coat the wax on it right there in Sioux Falls. All the wax comes from... Uh, A.H. Myers up in Winford, South Dakota. Like I said, it's about 40 minutes from Sioux Falls. So we're just kind of a little company out in the middle of America. I think that's, that's so huge because there are so many different, um, in the beekeeping world, um, many things are not sourced in the United States. Very few things are. Right. Um, so to be able to uh, support uh, an American company made in the USA product that the bees choose, I think that's huge. First thing I noticed was the smell and also just how much wax is actually on these. I mean, it's, it's I mean, my, I, my biggest question I think that I have for you, Jeff, why I've got you here um, is when will Premier Bee products come out with a beard oil? <laughs> you know, I you shave? asked you asked me that the other <laughs> day. I, I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> it's, it's just it's it smells so good. Uh, and, and you know what? When you look at it, it looks amazing. Anyone who's, who's spent any kind of time with plastic foundation knows um, that you'll get if you if you get a light colored or a natural colored wax um, with some of the other some of the other, other manufacturers, it's a very very dark wax. Right. It doesn't smell this good, and it's very dark. 
I mean, this is is nearly, uh, I, I'd almost say translucent. It's very amberish. It's very light colored. Smells amazing. Yeah, it's um, almost kind of a lemon color. That's it. The yeah, lemon. That's it. Yeah, and you can and you can really see it. Um, so I don't know, you know, exactly. I it's it's made in the U.S. A. H. Myers cappings wax only. Uh, it's done well. The bees love it. Um, the, the, like I said, our, our main hitching point on this was, well, what do the bees have to say about it? That's right. Let the bees tell you. The bees told us, hey, they loved it. They keep choosing it. Um, and so for me, it's kind of a win-win. The bees love it. Uh, I can I can su support something that's made in the USA. Um, and it's been a force multiplier for us in our bee yard. Um, as you can tell, we're kind of a big fan of that. And I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing how it does the rest of the year. Um, we've already had... Um, some first extractions with it and the frames of honey to come off with this are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, when we're uncapping, it's just beautifully clean, amazing looking frames that spin out well. There's no wonky comb to have to cut and pick and all. It's just, um, it, it's, it's been tremendous um, for us. Well, you know, um, speaking of when you're taking it through extraction, um, you know, because that cell wall on each one of those cells on that sheet's 36% thinner, you get up to about 10% more cells um, per sheet. So, you know, you think about it, if you've got a honey super that's completely filled out and every frame's filled out, but w that frame has 10% more cells on it, you're going to get more honey off that frame too. That, that's a huge deal. That is that's a huge a, deal. That's a huge, it's a, uh, um, even a greater return on your investment. Um, not only that, but if you are raising bees like we are and you're making nukes up or you're making queens, there's more bees in the boxes. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's a win-win. Yep. That's, it's a huge deal in the brood box. Um, also, um, Brett 80 said to me, he's the one, actually, I, I'll be totally honest here. I knew that our cell walls were thinner because that's what the bees made in nature, but I didn't connect the dot with a thinner cell wall to more cells per sheet. And I was talking to Bright 80 one day and we were kind of going over some of the, the different dimensions and things that I had come up with. And right off the top of his head, he goes, oh, well, how many more cells per sheet do you have? And it's like, I hadn't even thought of that. <laughs> so I said, well, you know what, Brett, I don't know, but I'll go home and figure it out and I'll come back tomorrow and let you know. So I went home and got a, uh, a white paint pencil and took um, every sheet of plastic foundation that a manufacturer had out there in ours and I counted every single cell. And so then the next day I go back and I tell Brett, well, depending on what you are using, it's between six and 10% more cells per sheet. And he goes, that's huge to a commercial beekeeper. He goes, if I can have six to 10% more brood, he goes, that's huge. He goes, you think about that, Jeff. He goes, if you've got 10% more cells, what you've done is you've taken a 10 frame box and turned it into an 11, 11 frame, frame box. box. But he goes, I got the 11th frame for free because I didn't have to buy another frame. That's right. That's so, fair. yeah, that was, and I, I didn't come up with that. That was Brett 80. That wasn't me. Well, it's, it's obvious that you're passionate about this foundation and a lot of folks are excited um, about using it. You seem to be having a really good time. Yep, I am. You know, life is, life is good. Um, I've been blessed because I get to do something for my work that really isn't even work. It's just having fun. This the whole foundation premier B thing. I have never had more fun in my life. It is just fun. Um, working with beekeepers and the people that are wanting to start their own small bee supply stores, all these people, you know, a guy is just fortunate when he can do that. Going to work every day is not going to work. It's just, I just have fun. Yeah. You know? It reminds me, um, uh, have you ever read, uh, the old man in the sea? Yes. Okay, so Ernest Hemingway, if you haven't read it, um, spoiler alert, uh, I didn't read it either. I just watched the movie. I, that's, that, that's me. Watch the movie. Um, but it, it, it kind of reminds me, um, you know, and we were actually just out fishing. And so the thought has kind of come um, kind of, you know, for full circle. You, know, you, you can definitely go about life and you can lone wolf it. And you can set out to try to uh, be the best that you can by yourself. Um, you can be like the old man in the sea that goes out to try to catch that last big fish on your own. Um, and if you haven't read the book or watched the movie, spoiler alert, but uh, the, the, there's an old man as, as the legendary fisherman of the village. He goes on a little bit of a dry spell and decides uh, he's going to go out further than he's ever gone to catch that fish uh, to kind of 
uh, show the rest of the village, maybe show himself that he can do it. And he goes out and he goes out further and further and further and further and further. You know, everyone at this point has already been in for a day now and the old man has not returned. And where, where is he? Well, he's still out there. He's still trying. He's still going after that big fish. Well, eventually after exhaustion and uh, almost heat stroke, he barely has enough in it. He gets a tug on the line. He catches that big fish. Well, he catches this mag magnificent fish uh, and, and manages to, to, to kill it, but then he can't get the fish in the boat. So now what is he gonna do? He's all this time, he's barely surviving, uh, barely captured the fish. Now he can't get it into the boat. So he ties it off to the boat um, and he tries to make his way back to the village. Uh, and then what happens? There's no wind, there's nothing. Blazing heat, blazing sun, no wind. He can't get that fish back. Uh, the next thing that happens is the fish the boat and him are attacked by sharks and his entire catch, nearly his entire boat and his life barely um, all escape. The, the, the massive fish was consumed by sharks. The boat was beat up. He's wore out, he's tired. Uh, and after it's all said and done, a little bit of wind picks up and he makes it back to the village um, with a heck of a story to tell. Um, but there's nothing left of the fish. And it kind of reminds me, you know, we were out fishing with, uh, with, with Damon and Ed and Doug and, uh, and Ed's son. And I mean, we were just reeling in the fish. You know, here are six guys working together, just catching a slew of fish. And it was really fun too, wasn't it? And it, it was really fun. Yeah. I think the, the, what's neat about the old man in the sea is there are lots of lessons that you can constantly take from that. And you can read it and have a different take or perspective on it. But if you're growing a business, uh, or you're raising a family or anything, building community, I think it's awesome to be in a situation where you're on a boat with other folks, yep. working together for a common goal, that common, um, even that common passion. And we end up with, we all limit it out in half the amount of time. Now, that's the fun thing I think about beekeeping. And as passionate as you are, you get to work with so many different people, you get to help folks, you've helped us out uh, to help us get to that next little step. You know, could, could we get to where we want to go by ourselves? Probably. But once we get to where we think that that is, then what? Can we even bring that yield back? Can we even do anything with it? Are we going to exhaust all the resources, us physically, mentally, financially, spiritually to do it? There's something to be said about working with folks uh, for a, a common goal. And I think one of the, the, the greatest things um, about the, the, the relationship that I have with you guys in Premier is you're, you're taking care of your people. You're picking up the phone, you're answering the calls, you're helping folks get to that next level. Um, and so for that reason alone, I think folks, if, if you're interested in going uh, or entertaining the idea of, of Plastic Foundation, give these guys a shot. They're there to, to answer the call. Uh, they're there to help you out. And uh, I think that you'll see, not only will you love it, but your bees will too. You know, Greg, thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. Um, thanks for having me in to talk with you today. Um, the one thing that I'll say is, you know, we're not the smartest guys in the world that came up with this. All we did was let mother nature tell us what she wanted somebody to figure out how to make. And then we did that. We didn't invent the light bulb or anything like that. We just were smart enough to let the bees tell us what they wanted. And then we had to figure out a way to make it. So mother nature's way smarter than we are. You just have to be smart enough to listen once in a while. It's easier to work with nature than against it, isn't it? Yep. Just like it's easier when you're working with good people too, than working by yourself. Right. Yep. Well, Jeff, thanks for, uh, for coming out to Ohio and spending some time with us. I think I just heard the brisket bell. Yep. I did Damon's too. Got, uh, he's got lunch ready to go. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to a challenge down. And as always be the lighthouse beef, sure to follow your dream. And remember, be the change that you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Hey, can you help us out? Hit like, subscribe, share with all your friends, and be sure to check these great videos out too.